Hey guys, yesterday we had some massive news drop about a whole brand new rank system for season 9 and also a few big changes coming this season. I put everything together that we know, so from their video, the article and a few extra parts as well, so this is basically everything we know about how the game will change. So first up, more solo carry potential starting now and moving into next season. I know this has been a pain point for a lot of people right now. They're really trying to get the game away from it being about who has the worst player to who has the best. So you can actually do a lot of work again. To start with, we're going to have things like shutdown gold. That is the example they gave us. And then it's all about increasing individual impact and carry potential no matter what role you play. The other thing in the video is a clash. The in-game tournament system will be released soon onto live servers. But along with the carry potential and that stuff, but here are a few other mid-season changes that they are planning. They're going to change the AD carry role, reworking how AD carries do damage mid to late game, getting away from burst into more sustained damage. That's going to mean that tanks should still be ripped apart by an AD carry that is really their job, but others shouldn't die as quickly. So like a mid laner, a jungler, a top laner, they should stand more of a chance when they're against a late game AD carry. Also, they want to be increasing the damage that AP champions deal to towers so that you can play them in more lanes, more roles, and be able to push steal, which is something they can't really do very well at the moment unless you have a Lich Bane. Finally, moving away from the reliance on AD carries to carry the game as you get later into it. We're going to have changes to junglers, mid lane and top lane to make them do a bit more if they get a lead and actually be able to carry the game. Now we're going to get into the Season 9 ranked changes. So the first thing is the wheel placement games at the very start of the season will make more sense to you and uh, you'll actually be able to see the progress that you're making. You will get a rank after the first game that only you can see, nobody else and that is the lowest that you will be able to place if you lost every other game. You're then going to be playing the rest of your placement games after like normal, but you'll be gaining more LP than you would normally afterwards. You'll be skipping your promotion series. And also if you lose, you won't be losing any of your LP. One of the other things is that there will be unique ranks for each role that you play and you will have to do placement games for every single role it looks like. You will have a different rank, different division, different LP for each individual role, whether it's AD carry or jungle. Matchmaking will actually adjust as well based on what role you end up with in game. You're going to still have primary and secondary when you queue and most likely you will get that role the same as now and auto field will still exist so just because you queue with one doesn't mean you're actually going to be able to get LP with that role. There are also going to be two new tiers added and less divisions to climb in each of them. This sounds like the plan is going to be adding a tier between bronze and silver and another separating out diamond. The number of divisions though within those tiers are going to be reduced from five to four making it quicker to climb through each. In theory you don't have to go through as many. Season 9 is actually going to be split though into three different sections, kind of like the LCS in a way. Your rank will not reset between these three splits, but you will be getting rewards based on where you finish for each one. End of season is still going to be exactly the same. We'll still have the rewards, they'll still be there, and they should be better at the same time as well. So you're going to have to work through all three splits to get that. Another thing that's changing is borders will now be based on the current season and they will be updating throughout the season as well. As soon as you get placed, after you've done your placements and stuff, you will be getting a new border. That border will change as you rank up during the season. So if you start in gold, it will be gold to start with. And then if you get to plat, it will change to plat immediately. You'll also be getting additional rewards on top of a border now and also on top of end of season. You'll be able to earn rewards based on your rank, but also upgraded based on your performance in each individual split. The examples they give are our icons, rank borders looking a bit different and upgrading throughout the season and even in game things. This will be tested in normal draft games at some point before we get to season 9 so we'll see if it actually is still the same but that is what it's going to look like. So that is a lot of stuff happening over the season and moving into the next one. Let's just break it down properly though and talk about what they could actually mean for the game. Like I actually really like all of these changes except one. Let's look at the potential worst thing about this entire system first of all which could be the each individual elo per roll thing. We'll talk about it probably in a second, but like there are so many questions and ways this could be messed up. This system seems kind of cool, but are you really going to make me climb three or four times throughout a season? Like each individual grind for the LP because I want to play three or di four different roles. Like imagine if you start in gold, right, in your placements, and then you spend the entire season improving and grinding, and you finally get to diamond at the end of it, and then you want to play like a bit of a different role, and you have to start again from gold and spend another year grinding up. Like it will take a lot of time. What about as well if I want to play two roles together at the same time? Even worse, like three roles at the same time. But if I want to play support and AD carry together, like I do quite a lot, I often alternate. Some days I'll play AD, some days I'll play support. But now I'm going to be climbing twice as slow as before. 
my AD and support are probably about the same level, and that's why I do that. But like in this system, I would honestly have to climb twice, and it would actually suck. It would take so long. The biggest issue with this, the biggest problem I can see is that when you get into a lobby, like a champion set lobby, right? Imagine you are auto field and you are put top lane, and you haven't actually played a top lane before, or you're like a real low elo in comparison to your main role. What happens if I beg my team to swap and let me actually play my main role? Suddenly you've got like a main AD carry who's maybe diamond level, but you're in a gold level game because you were given top lane at the start. They do kind of talk about having a proper system for swapping and stuff like that, but surely they're not going to kick you out of a lobby and you'd have to like take even longer because you do actually swap to your main role. I don't know if it's actually going to work like that or not, but it seems like that is kind of a massive problem, right? People swap in champion select all of the time and this system doesn't really work with that. You might have like three gold level or mains or something. You might have a diamond level main in one role and a plat level main in the other. And what about if you all swapped around and you gave your best players their main roles? Suddenly that is going to be a massive disadvantage for the enemy team. The two new tiers, I think, are the best change here though. Some brackets have too big of an MMR gap between them, like bronze or silver. And then in diamond, those are the examples they give. It makes sense then. Diamond will be split in half and we get something in between bronze and silver. So you go bronze something into silver. We obviously don't know what they are yet. There is pretty much always been quite a big gap between low and high diamond, uh, but we'll have to see whether that new tier there goes before or after diamond. If it's before, you would have to climb another four divisions before getting a diamond from plat next season. So I make it even harder. If it is after though, you'll have something to work towards before getting towards master tier. Having four divisions as well to climb through means that you're going to be changing your rank quite a lot more. Like you'll go from silver to gold a little bit faster and you'll feel more like you're making progress. That I think is really good for the game. It's going to encourage people to actually try it. It will feel more rewarding as well. And you're actually probably going to enjoy ranks a bit more. Diamond 5 players are a really good example. Notoriously the worst because they know they can't get to master or diamond one, for example. So they just play kind of without having that drive or always trying to win the same in bronze. I think sometimes it's probably the same actually in the fifth tier of a lot of them if they don't think they can climb, but this should give people something to work towards a bit more and keep the game more competitive. So this guy is gold one promos for plat as an AD carry, but he is gold four for top lane and silver four for jungle, a whole tier lower. I want to scale this up by one tier. So if somebody is plat one about to get into diamond as an AD carry, their top lane would be plat four and then jungle would be gold four games. Maybe that could happen, maybe not, but a diamond level player or just about to get into diamond level player should understand the game much better than a gold one. That's just kind of like common sense, right? And they should have better mechanics as well. So in theory, they just abuse that to have an unfair advantage. I know it's kind of different for each role, obviously. So we're saying that their jungle just isn't very good, but like some knowledge and mechanics will transfer over from role to role. I think this is going to be really hard to manage properly. And if anything, it could end up like ruining a lot of games by having somebody much higher elo on their main role deciding to play something else and be placed a lot lower. Now, they have mentioned that it will be somehow linked, I think. So maybe it will climb a little bit as you go up. And obviously, there isn't going to be a massive gap. I think actually like a good idea would be maybe having like 25% of something of the LP gains you get from your main role applying to your lower one. So they all go up a little bit together. But saying that this could actually be a good thing. So right now, if somebody gets auto filled, if they are support and they have to play mid lane or something, often they get wrecked by an actual mid lane main and they kind of ruin the game. That really sucks. But in theory, this should kind of fix that. So now you will be up against like people on the enemy team who are also maining that role or who are as good as you. If skill level is more even, then games should be better quality in theory, right? But it also should stop a one trick Yasuo getting jungle and not being able to play it properly. If they're gonna one trick to climb a role, their others would be much lower, so they wouldn't be getting into the same games. You might think as well that that means games should be a bit easier because you won't have as many people random feeding and people should be playing roles at the same level. But remember, so are the enemy team. So if anything, it might actually make it a little bit harder, especially as well, if you play two to three roles instead of one, uh, you might not be able to rank as high as somebody who spends all their time playing one role, if that makes sense with a new system, especially. Part of that is just time, really. Like, this is a really big thing for me. So if it turns out to be like you have a separate account for each role, then it will absolutely suck. Imagine swapping between an AD account and then a support account or whatever, and each time you have to almost start again and climb on a new one, that is just a massive time sink and a waste of time as well. I know some people play a lot, but others have school or work or whatever and can't afford to grind the ladder for every role that they play, like two or three roles. The last thing they talk about with this is having some sort of system to make people try hard even when they get auto filled or a new role. That system had better be amazing or it will get a lot worse, I think. If somebody is an AD carry player and they get like mid lane their worst role, they probably are not going to enjoy that game very much and not
not playing 80 carry, so it won't affect your 80 carry elo even if you lose. They mentioned a bonus if winning your secondary at autofill rolls, but I'm not sure that's actually enough to solve that problem. That system, I think, is going to be really hard to get right, but who knows? It could make the game quality a lot better, but it could also mess everything up. The other thing, though, having three splits, like, I think that's actually pretty cool. It's easier and it's more fun to grind for closer goals. Like, end of split is coming, so I really want to get gold or plat or climb that little bit extra or whatever to get the extra rewards. It should make people take the game a bit more seriously. It will make it a bit more fun to actually play ranked and try it and make people play more. Having more rewards, uh, more tiers, more splits, and more impact on the games you play, I think is a really good thing for League, and especially if you can carry a bit more as well. So that is the rundown of all the changes. That is what I think as well. But what do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. But for now, I will leave you with the robots.